Welcome to Reeducated TV, where we keep you informed. Today, we will be taking a look at the destruction of some structures and the environment in the Americas and explore what could be the possible cause of the devastation. In these pictures taken in the 1800s, you have buildings that are below what we thought was ground level. There are many more photos depicting the same thing of structures in the same condition or state. In this photo, you can clearly see that the building below appears to have several floors or levels and the modern structures are built atop the roofs of the pre-existing structures. In other words, a city was built upon a city, literally. Whatever took place was no joke. This photo gives you an idea of the scale of the mud floods of the 1800s. The building, including the clock tower, is almost entirely covered with mud. Unbelievable, right? There were other buildings that appeared to be last floors that were turned into first floors as you can see in this photo. How many floors down or how far down does these buildings actually go? And I am curious to know what would be found or discovered if they were to excavate the sites. Could it be a similar site to Pompeii? A snapshot in time or was it something more sinister? that annihilated some people and animals and destroyed some states. So what really happened? Some people say it was a series of catastrophes. Hundreds of earthquakes, tsunamis and floods that took place within a two or three months period and others say it was some mysterious weapon that annihilated the various Mongol or Tartary factions and destroyed many structures in the Americas, similar to this weapon right here, called a scholar potential interferometer, in short, a death ray said to be invented by Nikola Tesla. But the question is, was Tesla exploring an invention that existed long before his time, before we get to the functions of such a weapon and the potential of the devastation involved, let's take a look at the cosmic catastrophes that took place. In the book Mongols in America, it speaks of a vision which foretold the destruction of the empire, an ancient oracle having predicted the destruction of the empire by strangers of such description, the emperor was too much alarmed to think of further conquest and to add to his uneasiness three years before this event, during the celebration of the sun at Cusco, a large eagle had been pursued and harassed by five or six small falcons and as many waterfalls till they tore and disabled him to that degree that he fell as if for secure in the great square in the midst of the Incas. They endeavored to cherish and nourish the eagle, but he died in a few days. The Augurs or the shamans declared anonymously that this was a presage of the ruin of the state and the extinction of their religion. This prodigy was succeeded by earthquakes which threw down high mountains, the sea left its ordinary bounds, and frightful comets appeared. A laker or a magician one day ran to the emperor in tears 
and so but of breath that he could scarcely speak to assure him that his mother, the moon, was surrounded by three circles, one of which was the color of blood, the second of dark green, and the outer one appeared like smoke, and to explain to him that Pachakamak by these signs indicated the extirpation of the royal family and the ruin of the whole empire. Although Huana Kapak was not insensible to these omens, he would not show a want of fortitude out of my sight, said he. Thou hast dreamed all this nonsense about my mother the moon. I will believe none of you augurs or shamans that the sun will permit the destruction of his children till Pachakamak himself assures me of it. The Inca, to provide for misfortunes, raised a fine army consisting of the best troops in the garrisons of the empire. He ordered all the soothsayers in the different provinces to consult the oracle of Rimak and particularly the great Pachakamak regarding the interpretations of these commotions in the elements. Their replies were ambiguous, but nothing extraordinary occurred before the death of the emperor. This was said to be Pizarro's first visit when he landed at Tumbes. Robertson dates this visit A.D. 1526. So the Incas had a vision that detailed the end of their empire, but nothing happened during the reign of Huanacapac. Now let's take a look if that vision actually came to pass, and if it did, when the empire could have possibly ended. But before we do, this picture is said to depict weather-controlled technology, where rain is produced for farming. This image was said to be on Mitchell's cigarettes. Could inventions such as the weather-controlled technology produce major floods and earthquake-like tremors on a grand scale? There is no doubt that it could produce floods, but earthquakes I'm not so sure. Maybe it would take another device or weapon to produce tremor-like effects. In the book, The One World Tartarians, The Greatest Civilization Ever to Be Erased from History by James W. Lee speaks of the Great Reset of 1811 to 1812. From December the 16th, 1811 through March of 1812, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest and between 6,000 and 10,000 earthquakes in the boot heel of Missouri, where New Madrid is located near the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In the known history of the world, no other earthquakes have lasted so long and resulted in so much damages as the New Madrid earthquakes. A sequence of three main shocks in 1811 to 1812 of three very large earthquakes is usually referred to as the New Madrid earthquakes. After the Missouri town that was the largest settlement on the Mississippi River between St. Louis, Missouri and Natchez, Mississippi. On the basis of the large area of damage, the widespread area of perceptibility and the complex physiographic changes that occurred. The New Madrid earthquake of 1811 to 1812 rank as some of the largest in the United States since its settlement by Europeans. They were by far the largest east of the Rocky Mountains in the U.S. and Canada. The area of strong shaking associated with these shocks is two to three times as large as that of the 1964 Alaska earthquake and ten times as large as that of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake. The New Madrid earthquakes were felt as far away as Canada and the eastern seaboard. 
The tremors caused church bells to ring in Boston and Philadelphia. The Earth's surface remained in a state of constant motion for nearly four months. Several towns were destroyed. An 18 by 5 mile lake was created, Real Foot Lake in Tennessee. The earthquakes were felt strongly across 130,000 square miles and moderately for a total of nearly a million miles. The effect was devastating and widespread. The upheaval was so violent it created Real Foot Lake 15 miles south of New Madrid and drowned the inhabitants of an entire Indian village along the Mississippi. The river amazingly ran backward for several hours, which may have been tsunami-like event exacerbated by the eruption of groundwater for miles along the shore, which caused a rapid rise of the water level in the riverbed. The earthquakes were felt as far away as the White House, Shortly before the first earthquake, people reported strange behavior by animals. Many animals were nervous and frightened. Domestic animals became wild, and wild animals became tame. Snakes came out of the ground from hibernation. Flocks of ducks and geese landed near people. In 1811, a great bright comet appeared in the skies. It was visible to the naked eye for around 260 days. In the USA, the comet was named Tecumseh's Comet, and the Europeans called it Napoleon's Comet. The arrival of the Tecumseh's Comet was followed by the New Madrid earthquakes, the biggest earthquakes in America's history. Well, as far as we know, Events that are said to link to the Black Sun prophecy. Tecumseh was an important Native American, mystic warrior and military leader of the Shawnee. He is remembered as a great hero who fought for freedom. His name ominously meant shooting star or he who walk across the sky. Tecumseh's brother, who was a religious leader known as the Prophet, had predicted a solar eclipse in 1806. William Henry Harrison, governor of Indiana, was worried that the prophet was becoming too popular and challenged him to produce a miracle. The prophet announced another solar eclipse, which occurred on September the 17th, 1811. Tecumseh's brother, the prophet, predicted a solar eclipse which is no miracle today, but the fact that the Incas visioned a comet and solar eclipse and that there would be earthquakes that threw down high mountains and the sea would leave its ordinary bounds is evidence that their vision possibly came to pass. But does that explain the end of the Mongols or Tartary? I would think not. But what caught my attention is the fact that most of the damages were in some places that the Mongols had conquered in the Midwest, such as Ohio, Mississippi River, St. Louis, Missouri, and Natchez, Mississippi. So it's clearly obvious that the magnitude of the devastation caused by the New Madrid earthquakes was no joke where many people lost their lives, homes and livelihood, and not to mention the animals that were buried under the mud floods. Can you imagine the sight of a comet for 260 days and experiencing 2,000 earthquakes in the period of a year and the most devastating tremors for four months? We all would think this is it, the end of the world. But for some, it was the end of Tartary. So the question is, was there some ominous weapon that caused the earthquakes, tsunamis and floods that destroyed some structures?
Let's explore some weapons that could have done similar damages. In the said book, the One World Tartarians also speaks of the destruction of Great Tartary, the Great Purging, as they call it, of the 1840s to 1930s. The book mentions the Moray Tesla technology, Star Wars even, and the story goes, in the 1930s, Nikola Tesla announced bizarre and terrible weapons, a death ray, a weapon to destroy hundreds miles range, and his ultimate weapon to end all wars, the Tesla shield which nothing could penetrate. However, by this time, no one any longer paid any real attention to the forgotten great genius. Tesla died in 1943 without ever revealing the secret of these great weapons and inventions, or so we think. Let's briefly take a look at the function of the death ray. In the pulse mode, a single intense three-dimensional scholar phi field pulse form is fired using two truncated Fourier transforms, each involving several frequencies to provide the proper three-dimensional shape. Need a break? Three-dimensional scholar phi field truncated Fourier transforms sounds intergalactic right after a time delay calculated for the particular target a second and faster pulse form of the same shape is fired from the interferometer antennas the second pulse overtakes the first catching it over the target zone and peer coupling with it to instantly form a violent emp or ordinary vector electromagnetic energy there is thus no vector transmission loss between the howitzer and the burst. Further, the coupling time is extremely short and the energy will appear sharply in an electromagnetic pulse, EMP, strikingly similar to the two-pulse EMP of a nuclear weapon. This type of weapon is what actually caused the mysterious flashes of the southwest coast of Africa, picked up in 1979 and 1980 by Vela satellite. The second flash was in the infrared only, with no visible spectrum, super lightning, meteorite strikes, meteorites, etc. do not create this effect. In addition, one of the scientists at the Arecibo Ion spheric observatory observed a wave disturbance, signature of the truncated Fourier pattern and the time squeezing effect of the Tesla potential wave traveling toward the vicinity of the explosion. With Moray generators as power sources and multiple deployed re entry vehicles with scholar antennas and transmitters. ICBM re-entry systems now can become long-range blasters of the target areas from thousands of kilometers and in air attack jammers and ECM aircraft now become Tesla blasters. Emitters became primary fighting components of the stunning power directed energy weaponry DEW with precision to take down world towers in 10.3 seconds and saw homes in half surgically. Now, these weapons could definitely have caused the devastation in the 1800s, even worse, but did they invent this weapon in the 1800s? It was said that Tesla invented his death ray in the 1900s. Was there a similar invention in ancient times, way before Nikola Tesla. This device is called Dorje Energy Devices, aka Tibetan Thunderbolt, the most powerful weapon in the universe. It is a spiritual symbol and a spiritual light weapon to be wielded in the other worlds. The Dorje symbolizes the impenetrable, immovable, an indestructible state of energy and relates symbolically 
to enlightenment. Over the centuries, we have heard of many tales describing similar energy forces from the Ark of the Covenant and its powers, the Mahabharata and their wars of the gods and more. Was there such a weapon in ancient times? And if there was, did Tesla merely stumbled upon the invention by chance or did he actually figured it out himself whatever the case might be mankind has created the most devastating weapons capable of wiping out a whole country and its people or even worse the entire world in the wrong hands it can be our worst nightmare some people say it was Tartaria's worst nightmare and subsequently their end and that some ominous weapon were in the wrong hands but no hand should be right for such a weapon let me know your thoughts leave a comment in the comment section do you think the catastrophes were caused by natural occurrences weather machines or something similar to the death ray that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.